welcome to an evening with Cora. I am so thrilled to have my guest on tonight. My guest tonight has is an award winner. Oh my god! He won Best Solo Artist at the Brighton Music Awards in two thousand and ten. He has supported people like Texas, Jarvis Cocker, Kate Walsh, and more, and has worked with many, many amazing musicians as well. So I'm so excited to introduce you to Paul Diello. Hi Paul, how's it going? Hello, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm so excited to have you. I'm so excited to be here and that was such a nice intro. Oh, well, you know, you've got to scream about you if you've got all of these things going for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about your music. I know you've got an album coming out soon. We'll get to that. Uh -huh. it's really exciting but i just got a few questions for you first like general kind of stuff really um but it's quite interesting for people to hear like where you started and how long you've been writing that sort of thing so yeah so have you always wanted to be a songwriter yeah I, well I've, I've, when, I was, when i was really little i wanted to be an actor and um, so my parents were part of a um, amateur dramatics theater society when i was growing up so i was treading the boards as a wee nipper um, and I, yeah, really fancied myself as a, as a bit of an actor, but I, I, I was really shy at, at singing. So whenever we did plays or any sort of thing that involved me having to have a microphone in front of my face, I just sang really quietly and they had to turn the mic up really loudly and I was really shy. And I wasn't a shy kid, but I was a shy singer. Um, but I was about 16, 17 um, and I was really into Jefferson Airplane and I loved Grace Slick's voice and my brother's a guitarist and he's always played music and written songs and he was playing and I said can you play Somebody to Love by Jefferson Airplane I really want to sing that song and he played it and I just started singing it with this new voice that I didn't know I had ha that I had I was think I was channeling a bit of Grace Slick um <laughs> well I, I wished I was you know um, <laughs> And I so then you know I was just like oh wow I I I, ha I have a voice I can sing and then uh, the songwriting sort of came really shortly after that I enrolled in a, a popular music um, performance course at Northbrook in Worthing and um, yeah really sort of found my feet and just after I'd sort of had that taste of singing and enjoying it um, I never looked back really so yeah my early songs oh absolute rubbish um but you know i'm very fond of them because they they, they were the beginning of the story but yeah. actually I, my my very first song was a song called telephone so i got there before lady gaga um, <laughs> but mine was not quite as um as memorable as, as gaga's <laughs> it was pretty bad it was about a, a, a telephone conversation with my girlfriend at the time when i was about 12. <laughs> so, yeah. amazing do Thankfully, there's no recordings of, of that available. There's no smartphones or anything, so I didn't sing it into the note, into the voice memos or anything. It's no. just gone, forgotten forever. Did we get to hear a little bit of it? No. <laughs> you've got to ask, you've got to ask. That's cool. And so you've been writing since you were quite young then? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I was about 16 when I started singing properly, but I did write songs before that. I had a little Casio keyboard and uh, I used to just press the different demo uh, buttons and then just write lyrics and sing over the, the demos um, and then just play like one finger notes and things. Um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I was a huge fan of music growing up and uh, I've always been obsessed with music and I've always been really obsessed with pop culture. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I really wanted to be on the cover of magazines and I wanted to be Madonna, really. I was obsessed with Madonna. I used to um, push the tables together in our little back room and stand on the stage and prance around in a little vest top and pants and pretend I was in the Blonde Ambition tour. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, yeah so it's always been it's always been a thing i love that <laughs> yeah because you've um you do theater as well well you're in a band right so you've done mm -hmm. uh, Brighton fringe a lot and hosted quite a few shows as well haven't you yeah yeah the hosting is kind of a new thing really i've certainly been in the last sort of three four years mm -hmm. um i spent a year in berlin where i was writing um a, a show that i did for brighton fringe mm -hmm. and i was recording this album as well actually make kevin motherland my new album mm -hmm. so you get a little little plug in there early um and when i came back i decided i yeah really wanted to start um running some queer nights in brighton and some some alternative queer nights so that was kind of my first step into promoting and hosting and and that's 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 been going well too so yeah it's just, just fun to be around creative people and like-minded folk 
absolutely and you've as you know so, yeah exactly <laughs> like you've been always so um encouraging and uh, inspiring for for myself but also a lot of people i'm sure um which is great and um, so you've been writing a long time like so you you, you know you've, you've probably got to grips with what songwriting really um means and how to write a song I don't know about that no? i think i don't know i mean it's always i find like most creative people will say when i'm in that zone and it just cut it just it always astounds me how it can just flow through you mm -hmm. and you think where the hell did that come from and then it just goes for so for eight like this this is my first album in seven years so it's uh, you know and i have obviously been doing lots of other stuff i've been mm -hmm. doing lots of creative stuff but i haven't really been writing a lot of original material and i just kind of thought maybe it's gone you know like it just you can't well i can't just get it out of nowhere. And I think, you know, other people, I mean, I listen to people like PJ Harvey, who I'm a massive, massive fan of, who is very, you know, she's a professional songwriter and she talks a lot about how, you know, it's a discipline and she makes sure she gets up every day and she writes something and dedicates some time to it. And even if it's all crap and nothing good, I mean, I can't imagine PJ Harvey ever writing anything crap, <laughs> but um, I'm sure she's got lots of screwed up balls of paper all over the room on some days. Uh, but I'm not really like that. I don't, I, like, I either have, something that I need to say at that moment and it comes out on, on the piano or, or it doesn't for seven years. So, uh -huh. yeah. And um, that was something I was going to say. So how do you, how do you kind of get up and go with songwriting? What, if you know you want to write something, if you have that inkling, what, what do you do first? Um, well, I, the music and the lyrics are always separate. I never sit and write the same, write them together as a whole. Lyrics usually come first and they usually come when I'm out and about. So I will have lyrics just pop in my head. I walk a lot. And, um, so yeah, well, just when I'm out and about walking, things will come to my head and I usually either just say them into my phone or I'll just write on my, I'm one of those annoying people walking down the street that's like just looking at their phone, but I'm, I'm being creative. I'm not just looking at Facebook. Yeah. I've definitely <laughs> been one of those that's just like recording something as I'm going along the street though. Yeah. You've just got to yeah, catch it whilst yeah. it's there. Yeah, I like to write in the bath as well, actually, on my phone. Ooh. Yeah, quite, quite often things come to me when I'll just be lying there in the in the soapy water and like, I'm going to write a song. That's, uh, I think it's just times when I'm on my own and those are the times when, I, when I'm generally on my own when I'm out and about walking and when I'm in the bath. Yeah, <laughs> I try that. Yeah. Bath writing, nice. And so uh, let's talk about um, Make Heaven Motherland. So where did the name of the album come from that interests me okay so this sounds really pretentious and and wanky can i say wanky we're on the internet yeah, yeah fine um i was i was trekking in the himalayas <laughs> <laughs> and um in nepal and i and i saw it spray painted on an old abandoned school um it said make heaven motherland and i just thought that was just really beautiful and uh and, and and that was years ago and i always knew that i would use that as a title for something whether it be an album or a song or something and it just stayed in my head and i uh, just i really like the imagery that it conjures and um and it, it has yeah and it's a nice memory for me as well and yeah. so yeah but i'm aware like, i've been asked this in interviews before and i feel really like <laughs> you know when i was Himalayan trekking it just sounds <laughs> a bit um a bit naff doesn't it like a, oh, I a, a gap year when i was finding myself i didn't yeah. have, not have that gap year <laughs> um, i love that the fact that you were hiking and it was just there and that's now your name. yeah yeah and i'm bringing it to life I love it. And so, okay, you had the name of the album before, I guess, you've written any of the songs. Well, most of them, yes. I So the thing with me is it takes me so long to make a, a record for one reason or another um, that by the time I've made it, I've already written the next one. So when I, yeah, when I saw the title for Make Heaven Motherland, I had written a lot of those songs, but I was still... I think I'd only just put out my second album. So that was like seven years ago. So yeah, so a lot of the songs that are on this new album, I actually wrote years ago, but, um, and now I've, I've already written the next album, which I'm, I'm actually in talks with the producer now. So I'm going to start working on that soon. Oh my God. We have more to look forward to. I love it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let, let's talk a bit more about the album then. So what, um, does it have like a one vibe? Like some albums have like a story from start to end. Does it have that for you or is it? 
different vibe? um no lyrically it definitely doesn't have one vibe it's it's not um so my first two albums were quite uh autobiographical and sort of quite melancholic in a sort of you know um down on my luck in love kind of vibe you know which is obviously quite a uh a popular theme for songwriting um with make heaven motherland a lot of the songs are kind of stories they're they're not always that i'm just kind of narrating other people's stories sometimes sometimes they're real stories sometimes they're characters i've created and there's you know there's a big dollop of me in there as well um but it's not it's it's there's lots of flavors lyrically definitely it's uh, and with sounds as well it's not um the first album was just piano, guitar and strings. The second album was a complete 180 and it was all um, 80s inspired synth pop. Um, and then this one is kind of, um, it's closer I suppose to the first one, but with, with more with percussion and uh, harps and um, ukulele and all sorts of things. And there's a choir on there as well. And so, yeah, it's a real mix of, mix of sounds and mm -hmm. sounds and stories. Yeah, because you released um, Lion's Tail in December. Which is I funny. did, yes. Yeah. You were in the video. I was in the video, yeah. You were, you were the, the second face in the video. Mm -hmm. I was very honoured to be in that video. Um, so yeah, that that's the, the only one you've released of the album? Or? The only one I've released so far, yeah. There's another single coming out on the 16th of April. Okay. Um, that was meant to come out much earlier. So the pandemic has slowed things down quite a bit. I was hoping to release Lion's Tale and then release another single in January. And then, but yeah, it's, you know, one reason or another, it's it's been a bit staggered. But actually the next song, single is called Into Springtime, which now it, it seems like a good time to release this one. So, Definitely. Um, although it's, apparently it's been snowing today, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely has. Um, and the whole album comes out on the 28th of May. Mm -hmm. Right, cool. Okay, well, if you don't mind, I'd love to hear some songs. You've got some songs that you prepared for us. Mm -hmm. um, so is now a good time to see them? Or would you like to introduce them first? Or Sure, yeah. So uh, these are two songs that are from the new album. Mm -hmm. There's a song called Ride and a song called Waterbed. Um, and uh, Ride was written... Um, before I went and spent that year in Berlin. So it's, this is one of the newer songs. So like I said, a lot of the songs I'd written years ago, Rides is one of the newer songs, although it's still about four or five years old. Um, and it was kind, it's kind of like a goodbye to Brighton. Um, yeah. And uh, Waterbed is um, a, a sort of a story about two um, reunited lovers who um, go upstairs and uh, bump uglies on a waterbed and it bursts and they drown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I did not expect that. That's great. No, I mean, when you hear the song, it's a really emotional sounding song. So the lyric, when I explain it, it always makes it sound so ridiculous. <laughs> but it's a little bit more metaphorical than that. I, that's, the, that's the comical way I like to explain it. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's more really to do with um, uh, cleansing, let's say. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing them. So let's hear from Paul the Yellow. So now he says goodbye for the very last time. A cycle past a mother's house. Questions they are asking, well, they are not mine. Storybook will write itself. My daddy's in the bedroom and he's packing a bag. He's going to sail the seas of mystery. I ride on past the window for the very last time. Catch his eye as he's waving And I will ride I will ride I will ride I will ride There's a man who dances wild and he like he's insane 
people watch him and they smile But I hope that someday I will watch him dance again Without a care, just like a child, just like a child And I will cry, I will cry, I will cry, I will cry, I Counting house, he's counting out his money. We're crying at the table like we never heard such funnies. I'm leaving in the morning and I may never return. So I cycle around this city so my memory is burned and I will.
one was very beautiful <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> just that like water we rise and then the piano it's just like gets you right in the feels yeah, yeah. good That's mission nice. accomplished then yeah absolutely <laughs> i can't wait to hear the full produced version because i bet yeah it sounds it sounds much better i think <laughs> i mean i i use um I, I, I do play piano, obviously, and I use it as my songwriting vessel, but I don't really consider myself a pianist. And um, I, I, yeah, I much prefer playing with others, with others rather than yeah. just being me and the piano <laughs> for yeah. the song, to have their full potential. I feel like I can sing better when I'm not playing as well. For sure, because you're not concentrating on the notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I understand that completely. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're much better than me, but I can, like, yeah, I prefer to just sing and let other people play the instrument. Yeah, definitely. But that's, yeah, I'm really excited to hear the full versions, as I'm sure everyone else out there is as well. But thank <laughs> you for sharing those with us. They're beautiful. Thank you so much. I love the little, yeah, the little homage to Queen in the first one. Yes. Yes, a cheeky <laughs> nod. Yeah. A little cheeky <laughs> nod, <laughs> which is always nice. Um, So... On the 28th of May, when it comes out, where can people get it? So it will be available from all the usual streaming sites, such as iTunes, uh, Spotify, you know, all that um, jazz. You could also um, order it from my website. Um, and if you wanted a physical copy, you can get a CD or a vinyl from my website. Also, if you pre-order before, I'm not sure when this is going out, but if you pre-order um, before the 28th of May, um, or now, preferably, then you will get it a month before. So everyone that pre-orders will get it um, at the end of April, um, yeah. as well as some like exclusives, and they'll see some of the videos before. Because it's not just a, a audio album; it's a visual album. So being in lockdown, the first lockdown gave me a lot of time on my hands. So I created a music video for every song on the album. Um, wow. So there's ten music videos and um, they are going to be all shown together with some interviews and um, little funny links and things as an online album launch, which will also be on the 28th of May. Um, yeah. And so where can we get the news for that? Will that be on your Facebook? Will that be on your website too? It'll be on my website. And if you follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Paul Diello Music, then um, yeah, all the details will be there. Um, I have a page uh, on a site called the floor which is kind of like patreon um but it's um more kind of uh, artists led and it's uh so people can subscribe to my floor page and there's three different tiers of monthly um, amounts that you can pay and you get different um treats for all the different tiers which has been a lot of fun as well for me putting together the packages and things to, to send out to people yeah. um but that they have a thing called floor tv so it's basically like a streaming site and um so i release these sort of videos and things through there first so people can all watch it together in a bit of a ceremonial um state and then then it will end up on youtube of course at some point down the line yeah amazing yeah. That sounds great. I'll have to check out their website. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Yeah, and I'll pop all Paul's links, as usual, down below in the description. So you can just go and click and uh, go follow Paul, show him some loads of love and buy his album on the 28th. Actually, pre-order. Do it now. Do it now. Pre-order. Yeah, I've also got some T-shirts and, you know, all that jazz. And I'm just so excited to have something coming out on vinyl because this is my first ever vinyl release. And it's always been a dream, so I've always been a vinyl lover. And for for the most part, vinyl hasn't really been much of a thing in my uh, when I've been releasing music. You know, now 
it's all the rage again, isn't it? So it's yeah. it's really exciting to, and I had the test pressings sent to me the other day. So yeah, I was just staring at it, looking at all the grooves going, that's my music in the grooves. I know, I would be so excited as well. I saw your <laughs> post think. and I was like, final. Yeah. So exciting. I'm yeah, like, that's yeah. like the dream, isn't it? To have your own song on vinyl. Mm -hmm. Quite literally. Yeah. Not everyone's dream, but for sure. Our dream, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And we're nearly done today, unfortunately. It goes so quickly, but it's been absolutely lovely to have you on the show. Thank you so much and oh, for sharing your music with us. Um, and just a last question. I ask everyone this. If you've been watching the show, you know what this question is. But um, so if you could give the people out there watching and listening just one piece of advice, uh, what would it be? Well, I think, so this is probably a bit um, cliche and um, obvious, but I, it's something, it's advice that I'm giving myself at the moment, really, and really trying to adhere to, is, um, is, is know your worth and don't sweat the small stuff. Because I have really spent a lot of my time really worrying about things that just haven't warranted the amount of stress and worry that I put on myself about it. Um, about how other people might perceive something or about how how I might have affected somebody or whatever. And I think really I, the only person who's being perceived, who's perceiving themselves badly or affecting themselves is, is, is myself. Um, so, and it's something I'm really learning and, and almost succeeding in. So that would be my advice to anybody is just, you know, figure out what's worth worrying about and don't worry about the other stuff. Yeah. I totally agree. I think that's mm -hmm. a very valid point. I know what it, someone said to me once, I choose not to worry about the th things I can't control. Absolutely. That's great. And it's so, it's so much easier said than done, isn't it? But it, it, it's a conscious effort, but you know, everything that's worth something is a conscious effort, isn't it? So. Absolutely. And I think it's, you know, worth, as you say, looking after ourselves and because unless we look after ourselves, how can we, exactly yeah others so yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing thank you so much again paul it's been lovely having you on thank you my um, darling it's been so much fun and i hope you'll have me back when the next album's out absolutely yes hopefully it won't be another seven years <laughs> let's hope not um if you've already started writing it though you'll probably get it done sooner so it's all good <laughs> amazing everyone go follow paul thank you so much darling lots of love thank you Bye. oh isn't he amazing I just love him so much. Um, I say this about everyone, but I really do mean it. <laughs> everyone that I've been on the show and I have on the show, I just absolutely love them. Um, amazing. So please, yeah, go and follow Paul. All the links are below. Um, if you're listening to this, um, then obviously, yeah, you can hear the, the links in the, in the recording. But please do go follow him, Instagram, Facebook, uh, buy his album all of those things. Get the vinyl, get the t-shirt. Oh no, I will be getting one. Um, and uh, yeah, also as as always I, I mentioned that we do have our PayPal links below. This is absolutely free for you to watch, by the way. This is not, you don't have to have to pay anything, but if you want to buy me or Paul a drink, then pop a little something uh, in, the pay, in the PayPal down below. But just to finish off again, so I have another quote for you. Uh, as usual. So this one says, it doesn't matter how slow you go as long as you don't stop. So whatever you're doing, just keep going. Don't give up. Even if it feels like it's just not going anywhere. Even if you're like, you feel like you're running down the road, but you just, you're hurting and you're out of breath. Just, just don't stop. Just keep going. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you will get there. You will. That's my little encouragement for the day. So thank you again for watching. <laughs> Have a fantastic week and I will see you next time. Much love. <laughs>